Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about my top five picks for the top five firearms used in the movie 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. Good movie, but before we roll into my number five pick, I'm just going to let you guys know that some of the content and trademarks shown in this video are not ours. We're not affiliated with Paramount Pictures in any way or with any other production studio for that matter. We just want to take a deep dive into the firearms they used in the filming of 13 Hours hours. So with all that being said, my number five pick. The Salient Gray Rifle. This thing is spicy, right? And it's not one, when I first saw it in the movie used by Roan, uh, I was like, wait a minute, is that the Salient International, Salient Arms International Rifle? Because I'm like, that looks a lot like the Salient Arms International Rifle. And sure enough, uh, it is. Talk about unique. Now, I will say this, the price point on one of these, if you can find it, um, Salient, I check your website often just because I'm curious, and I think it'd make a pretty sweet giveaway. Uh, let's say it's coming in at like $3,500. So it's not exactly cheap by any means, but they take pretty much all of the high-end accessories that you can find in a couple of their own accessories, uh, like their jailbreak muzzle device, and they throw it onto this AR. They make it in several different configurations, coming in like an 11 and a half inch, 14 and a half inch barrel, both in 300 blackout and 5.56, so that's pretty cool. And you've also seen it on a rack uh, in John Wick. I think it was also used in Transformers, so Pretty cool stuff and ultimately it just looks really neat and of course the scenes that we're seeing it being used in in 13 hours is with Roan they're out in the street they've got their nods on and they've got all sorts of enemy combatants coming all over the place and you see him just light up a couple of dudes with this rifle and again when I was watching the movie I was like oh, this movie's pretty good it's awesome it's got a great story obviously it's based on real events and uh, having actually met talked hung out with uh, Chris Tonto Peranto and kind of hearing some of this uh, from him is also uh, Pretty, pretty awesome. So check out our video footage when we went to go shoot with Fort Scott Munitions. If you haven't seen that, Katie got a little one-on-one -on -one time with him uh, about, you know, tightening her pistol shots up a little bit, but he was one of the instructors at this course and also Michael Billings, who's a uh, fantastic instructor as well. So check that video out. But anyway, number five, Salient Gray Rifle. My number four pick, the M240. The M240 belt-fed machine gun that you see being utilized a lot also by Roan on the rooftop is just, it, it's a fantastic belt-fed machine gun. I mean, it works very, very well, has a lot of inner workings from, uh, let's just say, previous machine guns that we all know and recognize, like the M60, and even all the way back to like some German machine guns. Wonder where they got the idea from. But uh, anyway, uh, with my time in the Marines, I've had a little bit of time spent on the 240, and other than its weight, it's a fun, fun belt fed. I mean, there's not too many belt feds that aren't fun. In fact, I can't think of them, as long as they're running all right, which the 240 actually has a little bit better reputation for running a little bit more reliably uh, over some other guns that we'll be mentioning here in just a few. Uh, but I will tell you that the 7.62 NATO chamber 240 is just flat shooter once you start pulling the trigger. Uh, of course, there's videos that you can be, that can be found of uh, Marines deployed. Uh, I guess, you know, the ammo tech, my job, didn't want to take any rounds back in. So you see some guys like dual wielding 240s. And what's funny is you'll see them actually shooting and the gun is staying flat thanks to the recoil, just holding the gun up. And then as soon as the belt runs out, they kind of fall forward. It's an interesting little concept uh, about recoil and how flat shooting the 240 is. But in the movie, you see Roan approaching, he, once he realizes that they're getting flanked, he actually takes the thing, moves with it and runs with it. And it looks like the actor portraying Roan uh, recognizes the weight and heft behind the 240 because you can kind of see it. He's still moving very efficiently and getting to the other side of the building and starting to engage those targets. But it was just kind of funny to watch that for a second, right? But uh, anyway, the M240. My number three pick, the Dushka, which uh, kind of stands like a my dear or a beloved person, something like that. Uh, in Russian, I don't speak Russian, not as well as Matt does anyway, if you saw our Mark 47 video. But uh, anyway, this is ultimately the M2 counterpart uh, to, I guess you could say, Russia's Modus. Uh, similarly chambered, the 50 BMG M2 is chambered in 50 BMG being 12.7 by 99 millimeter versus the 12.7 by 108 millimeter Dushka, DSHK. 
Uh, again, the term comes from the Russians loving it. But anyway, in the movie, it has a pretty significant role because, of course, once I was referring back to Roan having the salient gray rifle in a similar scene, they're on that street getting ambushed, all sorts of stuff. They get a technical, which is pretty much a vehicle with a mounted weapon of some sort. Uh, the, in this case, it was the Dushka. This thing rolls up. Roan's yelling at Tig to take out this technical. He's got the grenade launcher, of course, which unfortunately isn't on my list, even though it did play a significant part, but there were some other firearms that played a bigger part but it was a very cool scene because as soon as this thing rolls up and he's got the butterfly trigger just letting loose on the douchka uh you start to see bodies disintegrate as you can imagine that would probably happen and on top of that at one point it is just drilling rounds into this one white sedan and it is literally pushing the vehicle back uh would that actually happen I don't know, I've shot at cars plenty of times, but not with a 50 cal or much less a 12.7 by 108 millimeter cartridge. Uh, I can imagine, however, yes, there would be some movement, uh, but of course, would some Hollywood effect be thrown into this just to kind of exaggerate or dramatize uh, what was happening? Sure, because I think that sometimes, yeah, I have seen a couple of cars actually get shot with a 50 cal and those bullets just go right on through. There's, you know, sort of, there might be a little bit of wobble, but usually they catch on fire. But, uh, Anyway, that scene was pretty significant. You see them open up with this heavy machine gun, and then once Tig gets on target, it blows up the truck that it was on. So, R.I.P. Dushka and the dudes that were shooting that gun. Anyway, let's move on to my number two. And for my next pick, yep, the 249 saw. Specifically, the paratrooper model that is seen used quite a bit uh, in 13 hours. So we see Tig use it, we see, uh, we see Tonto, his character, using it as well quite a bit and you can definitely hear it. It's got a much more distinct uh, sound and a much higher rate of fire than what you're hearing out of like the M4s or any of the other guns for that matter. And you see uh, Tig and, and you know the guys just absolutely running with these things. And they did a couple of cool scenes where they kind of showed like from the shooter's perspective perspective down the barrel, uh, even showing uh, some of the optics and whatnot, which I, which was pretty cool. One scene I thought was kind of funny though was the machine gun, the you know the 249 going off and uh, being shot, but all you're looking at is kind of like this angle. It was kind of like you weren't seeing where the rounds were going, but I, I, again, it was still kind of cool if you ask me. Uh, I guess in a stressful situation like that, you might not be looking at where the rounds are going either. You're just saying bad guys are in that direction. Sweet. Oh, it's only semi-auto. Maybe one day, you know, maybe one day. But anyway, it's still really cool. FN's 249S uh, for semi is actually uh, one of the more reliable 249s I've shot. Uh, you do have to make sure that the belt uh, that you've got your 5.56 loaded up with uh, is actually like oiled. And that's where I've noticed that I've had the most amount of reliability out of the 249 semi-auto versions. Uh, but in the movie, you do see it used heavily uh, from the street battles all the way up to where they're on the rooftop and engaging the targets down below. And you just hear again, that rate of fire, especially when they go full on cyclic and they're just holding this thing down and letting it roar. Uh, they call it a saw for a reason. Obviously it's a squad automatic weapon, but this thing just rips things in half and uh, it's a really good time. So 249 saw definitely is on my list because of how heavily it was used. And my number one pick before we roll into that, you might be able to guess what it is for obvious reasons. Uh, but before we roll into it, you know what other guns were used quite heavily, but they're kind of like, uh, everybody's got these, right? Obviously we see the M4 a lot in this movie. Uh, it is still today, even though it might be getting replaced in the next 10 years, um, the standard issue service rifle for the United States Army. There's a lot of Marines that are issued the same thing. We still got a lot of the M16s as well. Uh, there's still a lot of guys out there with now the piston driven um, replacements, the M27 and whatnot, which is really cool. But there's also one other gun as an honorable mention that I'd like to, outside of the AK, which is obviously heavily used. Uh, but there's also uh, the Mark 18 Mod O, and the Mark 18 definitely deserves a place. Now this right here is a Mach 18 Mod O, as you can tell. Aero Precision though, with their enhanced upper and rail, and you know, we, it's a pistol and, look, we, we tried, all right? We don't have a Mod O in the house, but we got a Mach O. So anyway, let's roll into my number one pick. Number one, the HK-417, which yes, we have the civilian counterpart as you see right here as our current giveaway, the MR-762. And no, it's not only number one because it's our currently current giveaway. 
Well, Boone is portrayed in the movie uh, by a great actor as well, and you see him absolutely do work with that rifle. And some of the shots that he got off, I just thought were super freaking cool, especially under night vision, and you start seeing him mark the guys up, and you know, rules of engagement apply. So at the beginning of the of the assault, uh, they're kind of like, hey, let's tag these guys. You see them under night vision. They're pretty much using their IR. And they're saying, yep, I see that guy. Yep, I see that guy. Yep, I see that guy. And then all of a sudden, once all hell breaks loose, they're like, okay, cool, engage. And so that's exactly what you see. You see also the night vision clip on, uh, which is right in front of the scope. And you see Boone over there just, again, absolutely doing work. One of the scenes that really got me when watching uh, was whenever the one guy looks like he's finicking with his RPG-7. Either he's just loaded it, or he's trying to figure out how to pull the trigger, or whatever. He winds up pulling the trigger, though, once um, a 7.62 round goes through the top of his dome as he's looking down at it from Boone's 417. Uh, the RPG goes off, sits right into the dirt, and then him already being pretty much a KIA, uh, took out two of his own buddies with that negligent discharge of an RPG. That would be a bad, bad day to indie with an RPG, but as, as you saw in the movie. But anyway, that scene coupled with, you know, oh, you're gonna regret that or that's a mistake whenever the one dude's trying to drag his buddy out and yeah, he uh, takes care of him too. So anyway, yes, great movie uh, with a lot of pretty cool firearms. Salient also has uh, one of their Glocks in there. We gave away one of those, by the way. Uh, there's of course the SIG 226, bunch of AKs, RPDs, all that type of fun stuff, you know. But the ones that I hit on today were the ones that I thought were some of the most um, important or influential in the movie. And those are the ones I decided to hit on. So let me know if you guys agree with this list down in the comment section below, yay or nay. And uh, while you're doing that, or after you do that, head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries in for the HK MR762 long range package that we've got for you guys as our current giveaway. This is coming with the Vortex Viper PST 3.5 to 15 power scope, which is a solid one, the Vortex mount as well. Vickers Blue Force Gear Combat Sling. We've also got on this guy, first of all, it's a beautiful rifle, beautifully shooting rifle as well. It is utilizing HK's short stroke piston driven system in here. Uh, and it's funny on HK's, in HK's uh, manual for this gun, they really talk crap about DI guns in there. It's much cleaner shooting and more reliable. And it's very HK-esque and I just thought that was kind of funny. But anyway, it is a great shooting gun. And yes, the piston driven design of uh, <laughs> the AR-18 uh, works really, really well. So pretty cool, right? Uh, fantastic trigger on this guy as well. The G28 stock, which is also spring loaded uh, and has kind of a uh, adjustable cheek piece here. So if you need to change kind of how you're sitting on that, you can. So it kind of moves with your face instead of your face dragging along. And I guess, I, I honestly don't, seems kind of over engineered to me, but teach their own. Germans. Uh, but anyway, M-Lock rail on this guy, you'll notice in the movie, the 417 uh, has the Picatinny rail. It is definitely more of the military earlier adaption, adaptation of the 417. And this one is a little bit more practical. I don't know, it's still a 7.62 battle rifle, uh, but this is obviously in a DMR configuration, so. Uh, just let me know, again, about the list, what you guys think. Don't forget to utilize the code word, again, at ClassicFirearms.com to get your entries. Utilize the code word you see at the bottom of your screen right now. And what do you guys think about this movie? I do believe that this movie was uh, very well done. I have talked to Tonto personally. I kind of like this ass and was like, hey, man, did you like the movie? You know, I mean, this was something that he actually went through um, along with a couple of other guys that made it out of that situation. And he said they did a really good job at portraying it as accurately as possible and representing the men and women that were over there that went through all of that. So uh, I'm like, solid, that's that's pretty cool, right? Uh, read the book as well. It gives you a little bit more detail about everything that went on and um, careful who you vote for. Anyway, we'll leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com. Oh, wait, by the way, it's getting cold out, so if you need some hoodies, we got these new uh, light gray ones in that look pretty good with a MR762 next to them, so check these out.